Wisconsin Congressman and House Speaker Paul Ryan has his first political challenger of 2018. His name is David Yankovich. He's a Democrat, and he'll be trying to unseat Ryan in the 1st Congressional District. Last week, Yankovich announced his candidacy on Twitter. It's official, he tweeted. I have filed the paperwork and am taking on Paul Ryan. How badly do you want him gone? Yankovich is from Ohio, but he recently moved to Kenosha County. His website describes him as a regular guy, but also as a nationally recognized progressive voice. David Yankovich joins me now on Upfront. It's good to have you on the program. Uh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So let's talk about your reasons for doing this. Why are you doing it? Uh, it started off with my mother. Um, she got really sick. She was in a coma. She had pneumonia, um, COPD. Um, they basically told me that she wasn't going to make it, and I'm going through all this stuff with the insurance companies, and I'm going through the horrible decisions of end-of-life care that you get to. Um, I got really lucky that she did make it through. She was on Medicaid, and you know she was able to get the care. But I was thinking, like, how, do, how does somebody do that? How can you make the decision to take people's health care away? And it almost, if, if she didn't have that, she'd be gone, and I wouldn't have any choice. I have to basically make decisions on my mom's life based on whether or not I can afford to keep her alive. So, I mean, that was the, the final nailing point for me. I, I couldn't take it anymore, and, you know, I decided I'm challenging Paul Ryan, the person who was responsible for it. So you're, you're moving from Ohio, where yeah. you've been living, to Kenosha County for mm -hmm. now. Um, are, are you going to run into problems from people in the district who say, why would we want someone who doesn't really have a lot of knowledge of our congressional district uh, representing us in Congress. Is that a problem for you? I think it's the reason why I'm here in May. I, I have a year and a half to, to earn it, to meet everybody I can, to go to every city I can. You know, Paul Ryan, he's not just a local issue. He's not just CD1. He's a national figure. And what he does affects everybody throughout the whole country. So for me, I have to take that challenge on. I have to come out here and talk to everybody I can and earn it. I mean, it's going to come down to earning the trust. How hard is that going to be for you? Uh, what gonna, do you anticipate? I'm going to anticipate a colossal fight. You know, I mean, he's going to raise money. I'm going to raise money. He's probably going to come back and start doing town halls all of a sudden and, you know, meet with his constituents. And I mean, it's going to be a battle. And anything that I do, you know, the Republican Party is going to be able to come in and, and hit hard as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a big fight. It's going to be, you know, he's formidable. Yeah, you mentioned he's going to raise money, and he mm -hmm. will have a lot of money. There's little doubt about that. Yeah. How are you going to compete with him financially, especially since people in the 1st District will not really know much about you, at least yeah. initially? Oh, I mean, national money is important, of course, um, but I'm never going to be able to compete with Paul Ryan on a, you know, on a money level. He'll outraise me two, three to one. And anytime he needs money, he can just pull in a donor and, you know, get an order of $4 million or $3 million or have an order town hall somewhere else or, you know, meet and greets for $10,000 a pitcher. Um, so what we're going to have to do is have people power. It has to be a national thing. And it has to also be a local thing. I mean, I have to earn the trust here, but also on a national level, we need people, you know, phone banking, for pulling support, volunteering, doing everything they possibly can to, to get him out. Why do you think he's vulnerable? If you look at the numbers, first of all, mm -hmm. Donald Trump won that district pretty handily. Yeah. Um, then Paul Ryan did even better. He got 65% of the vote. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Paul Ryan is vulnerable in that district? Well, there's a, a resistance that's happening. And, and you say you're part of that. Yeah, I would say that I am. Um, since the beginning when Donald Trump became president, one of the first things I did was try to start organizing people. Like, this is going to be bad. We need to get together. You know, I started getting candidates from, you know, Utah, California, or Georgia, anywhere I possibly could to run regular people to get in, but also organizing on a national level to phone bank and make calls and do that. Ryan's in trouble right now. He may not see the numbers that, you know, I'm seeing, but with the resistance and what's happening, and when you're seeing these districts like, you know, in Kansas, it's a 30-point district or 20-point district, and we're losing by a couple. I mean, we're, they're, they're losing in solid red areas right now by 15% of the people that they had just six months ago. Donald Trump right now with his health care agenda and, and Paul Ryan with what they're doing, it's not popular. It should be a fundamental right that people should be able to have care in this country. And you shouldn't have callousness where you look down on others. My mom, she worked her whole life. She fought really hard. And now that, you know, they're trying to take health care away. I mean, it's not like she's mooching off the system. It's not like she's doing something wrong. She paid into the system her whole life and now she's sick. And they're trying to take it away from her. You, you're, you're known in, in progressive circles. You, you've been very active, uh, writing mm -hmm. blog posts for the Huffington Post for, for a number of months, not so much recently, but yeah. for, for quite a while. You've got quite a few Twitter followers. Um, but there are a lot of people who don't know your background. So tell people mm -hmm. a little bit about what you've done and, and why you think that makes you qualified to hold this office. Yeah, I mean, we have Republicans right now who 
have ran industries, are billionaires, and they can do basically anything they want in the life, anything at all. I'm a regular guy. In my life, I've been in property management and I've been in banking, but I know what it's like to actually struggle. I know what it's like to have food stamps. I know what it's like to sleep on an air mattress. I know what it's like to have things really hard. And I'm qualified for this office because when a representative is supposed to represent their constituents, you're supposed to understand where they're coming from. You're supposed to go to town halls and you're supposed to talk to people. So the reason why I'm qualified for this is because I know what it's like to have it hard. I know what it's like to have it pretty decent as well. And that's my qualification. David Yankovic is a uh, challenger to Paul Ryan in the year 2018. We're still a ways away, but you're out there early as a Democratic candidate. David Yankovic, thanks very much for being with us. Appreciate oh, thank it. you for having me. I appreciate the time. You bet. The Republican Party offered this response to Yankovic's candidacy. Wisconsin Democrats have such a decimated bench and are in such a state of disarray that they need to import candidates from outside the state's borders. It goes on to say... While they talk a big game, it's clear that Wisconsin Democrats aren't made in Wisconsin and don't have an agenda for hardworking Wisconsin families. Still ahead on Upfront, the Wisconsin political story that just won't die.